My guest today is the vocalist for Flying Colors, a super group getting ready to release their second album called Second Nature. Out this month on September 30th, I'd like to welcome back to the show, Casey McPherson. Hey, man. How's it going? Good. How you doing? Good. Just uh, chipping away. It's your birthday, from what I have been told. Yeah, it is. It's the, maybe one of the first birthdays I've actually been home, so that's nice. Uh, well, happy yeah. birthday. Sorry you have to spend Thanks, it with man. me. But <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> Uh, listen, right. it's uh, it's cool because you're the first guy I've interviewed since I started the website uh, for the second time. Oh, so, were we talking? Was I on the? I was on the um, slopes when I talked to you, huh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think I do remember that. I yeah. think I was in uh, in Colorado. Where or was I? Yeah, I, I think so. Say. Well, that's cool. Yeah. Well, anyway, thanks for doing it again, man. I, I'm. Uh, yeah, you know, like, like I said last time, if. You know, I'm a big fan and uh, even bigger fan now with the release of the new album, which is uh, Second Nature, and it's uh, just kick-ass. I mean, just great. Great, great stuff. Thanks, bro. Um, Thanks, man. Yeah, so, you know, I guess we'll start there. Let's let's see. Last time we spoke, we, we you were coming off the release of the Live in Europe thing, and I think you guys were just about planning the uh, the studio time, around Christmas time or something. I think it was, was the thing. So... What what were the next steps of uh, meeting and recording, and how'd that all get get going? I remember uh, that you know this record was harder to get everybody together for one section of time. You know, so we met we met in um, was it two sections, I guess, and then and then Skype. So we did the first kind of session at Neil's house and the second session at uh, uh, Mike's house. And um, I remember showing up late for the first session and they had already got into about the, a five minute, 10 minute interlude. And so I, I remember going, man, I got to set up my mic before, you know, cause, cause the sooner I can set it up, the sooner my vocal part can come in. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so I, I remember rushing to get that, and then you know we had some really great Skype sessions uh, between the two se- the two recording sessions, you know, and and it took quite a while for us to get this record done in terms of writing, but you know, which is partially a scheduling thing, and and we also didn't want to rush it, you know, we wanted everybody to feel comfortable, and um, this band is such a labor of love for everybody, so. Uh, you know, we want to keep it that way. I mean, as a, as a quote unquote type of like side project or something, um, it just doesn't sound like that. It sounds like you guys spent five years working on these songs. Is there so much in each one and they're also thought out and the album flows? How, how is it that this band works so well in such a short amount of time and you guys accomplish so much that way? Man, it's just, you know, like with any band i think it's energy it's things that you can't it's untangible energy you know when we get together we all wish we could get together more you know but it's like there's so much energy because we know we have such a short amount of time and we're just into it like immersed in it and it's really it's a real real special experience and i think everybody would agree that it's not like anything it feels like it doesn't feel like a side project no, you know, yeah, it, doesn't it isn't sound like it at all. Yeah. And, and we're all very, very passionate and proud of it and, and wish that we could write more together and wish that we could tour more together. And, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of that going on. This time there was no producer, right? So you guys did it yourselves. So did that sort of influence, I guess the, the influence of more prog on, on the album and uh, maybe a looser vibe? than than before oh yeah for sure yeah for sure i mean you know i think some of their some of the guys intention was to to bring prog to pop music and my intention was to bring some pop melodies to prog music you know and so i was really excited with this record that we were able to mix um those uh, different practices together uh, a little bit more, you know, and so you could you could have kind of a, a musical interlude and go someplace and then come back into this this soaring melody and it, and it you know there'd be 
there, there's just less rules, you know? And, uh, and so I, I feel like the band worked really well together. We argued very well together and, and fought well together and, and, uh, and agreed well together. So that was, that was nice. That doesn't always happen. Right. Is it, uh, so, I mean, as far as writing, is it that, Maybe some of the songs, let's say like, uh, and tell me if I'm wrong, I mean, I'm just sort of guessing here, but like A Lost Without You is maybe more directly from you because it sounds a little bit more like a pop song and whereas Open Up Your Eyes is maybe more of like a Neil Moore song or is that just things come together anyway? Um, actually, I think it was the opposite with that. Oh, I figured as much. Um, <laughs> Let me, because cause I can remember. Um, yeah. So, so that verse was Neil, and then um, "Open Up Your Eyes" was was a melody line I I created. And so, but what's funny is Neil and I are both really melodic guys, you know. And so everything that, like most of what he does, I love, and most of what I do, I think he loves. So it's really easy for us to to, you know, he and I are kind of. Um, the the singing mo- melodies but steve is really you know steve basically sings melodies with his guitar so between us three you know a melody really shapes takes shape once it gets through everybody's filter yeah. regardless of who who the initiator is you know i also hear a lot of sort of steve morse's uh solo records kind of guitar parts in throughout the album um songs like oh, yeah. forever and stuff like that which may, maybe people that don't know his solo music wouldn't realize that but um does he as far as the guitar parts i mean that's a major influence on the songwriting correct yeah and i mean i actually made it a point to talk like steve and i had a conversation and i said man i really want you because a lot of people know steve morris is one of the world's greatest guitar players but they don't they they all don't know how well he uh, composes, almost like a symphonic, you know, composing with yeah. his guitars. So um, it was, you know, I, I asked him, you know, if it wasn't like a rhythm straight eighth note deal, it's like keep keep adding your guitars, and I will I will just play these other supporting parts because there's something really special about how he writes that way and. I wanted to give it more room because last, you know, the last record, I just played all my rhythm parts like I normally do. And this record, I, I played less because I really, I don't know. I really wanted to hear that side of him. I think it's a really special side and, and I think it really adds to the record. Yeah, I agree. Um, so what, what's some of your favorite tracks on the new album? If, if there are any, or, or, you know, the whole thing, I suppose. Well, I love the single Mask Machine. I think uh, it draws from some of all, all my favorite influences, and and it rocks, and it's so much fun to play. And then Cosmic Symphony um, is one of my favorite tunes. I think those two are probably my favorite tunes. Um, but, you know, I, I like all the songs, but those two are most proud of. Yeah, the last song, Cosmic Symphony, really stands out because it's a this long, expansive song that you would think is a kind of prog instrumental thing, but it's really not, and it's very sort of melodic a lot of your vocals and and especially the last section is really focused on your voice and it's uh pretty powerful stuff i think yeah that last verse man i i really it was a really special verse you know something from something deep inside yeah. i don't know how to explain it but it's it's not a typical melody it's not thought out it wasn't um composed it was just uh spewed <laughs> i don't know i don't know another way you know it just came out as opposed to like trying different things and thinking about it you know yeah yeah i got i get that from that um when when you guys are after you've done all the recording uh, and you've sent all the files and you've done all that you know online uh how does the mixing happen is that also just sort of sent to you, you five of you are in five different parts and you each get it and you're sending back notes or is it one person sort of, you give them the go ahead? You know, last time we used Brower and Michael Brower is amazing. Um, but, um, you know, he's on a big time crunch. So we just sent Mike and Bill up there and, and they made a lot of those decisions. <clears throat> this time we all took part in the mixing and 
and uh, sent notes uh, to Bill and had Bill send notes to the mixer and and uh, um, you know I think we're all pretty proud of it. We really like. He took different directions depending on the song, and and I really like this. There's some kind of retro stuff going on in it that that you might hear in in some of the more alternative pop today, you know, like by keys and stuff in terms of production styles, and and he used some of that here, and I, I thought that was really cool. Yeah, um, there's a lot of uh, new prog. I mean, I put you guys sort of in there, but uh, that it doesn't sound dated like you know, some of that neoclassical prog that maybe people always thought of, you know, 10, 15 years ago. Um, and, and especially an album like what you guys are doing sounds really current. You know, my goal, just because I'm the youngster in the band, is to try to try to modernize our sound as much as I could. You know, talking to some of the world's greatest musicians, you can only say so much. But, <laughs> um you know, I try. I try to have that as being my influence in the band. Yeah, totally. you know, because yeah. I'm into it. So, you know, one thing that's cool with you guys for both albums, and and I especially on this one too, is the artwork, uh, which has gotten a lot of comments on kind of message boards and and online and everything. Did you have any say in the artwork, or was it just sent to you and you guys thought that was it? Oh yeah, um, uh, we had a lot of arguing, <laughs> a lot of arguing. And a lot of, you know, he was one of the greatest artists for album art artists uh, that there ever was, you right. know. And so, but, but there was a lot of renditions and a lot of, of um, you know, the first album found this artist that had that uh, sculpture. So that was pretty easy. You know, it looked real, it's like, wow, this is it, you know. So there wasn't like a, there wasn't like a distinction between the creation of the art. It was merely like, yeah, that's the, that's the icon. And this time it was, you know, we all really loved the butterfly, but not as like the main thing. And it was kind of, you know, you got to be careful about things that gentle, especially with rock, you know, it's like, it's like, um, you know, you want to show beauty, but you don't want to overshow it, you know, to where it becomes, uh, uh, shiny, happy people holding hands, you know? And, And so, so, you know, we kind of went through these kinds of scenes and 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 really explored with you just the the what is the metaphor? What is the what what is the story behind uh, you know, um second chances um and and that word second um uh our, our second nature, what is that, you know? And is it uh is it the thing that comes naturally or is it the thing that we have to find? after we've explored all other options, you know, and, and Mike has a joke about this record that we should have called it second guessing, you know, because we, <laughs> right. we went through so many different renditions and, uh, um, but we're really happy how it all turned out. Yeah. Um, and, uh, so touring, you guys have, have planned some dates coming up, uh, a couple in the States and, and some more in Europe. Uh, I imagine still a, a real difficult challenge to, to book, right. With, with everybody's schedule, um, what about playing uh, both albums on this tour? Has that been in discussion? Have you guys talked about set lists? Yeah, you know, uh, Mike's presented a set list to us, and and uh, it's. I imagine it's going to grow. So we're definitely playing songs from both records. You know, I don't know. I think it. I think maybe in his mind, he's thinking the record's just getting released, so. You know, we don't want to just play just the new record because some people may be comfortable with it by then and others may not, you know. So we want to kind of get a little bit of everything for everybody. Um, you know, how much of each record we're going to play, I don't I don't know. I don't know that we're playing both records back to back. But I think we're taking some of the highlights from each record. Very cool. What else is going on with your other projects? I know you had uh, last time we spoke, you were you were in the middle of your Alpha Rev tour. I mean, so where are you with that, and, and anything else you're working on? Um, well, so I'm writing a new Alpha Rev record, and uh, I'm not in really any hurry because I just had a I had a kid about seven months ago, a little girl, and and uh, I've really been enjoying being at home with her and, and writing. And I'm and currently I'm 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 working on. Uh, a couple of different scores for a couple of different films. So I've been doing that and, um, 
I've got some kind of other art projects where I'm, you know, doing some performances with film. And so, you know, kind of a, a back and forth thing uh, where you're playing music and then you hear the film and then you're playing music again. And so it's a, but it's, it's more than like a score. It's actual songs. And so I've been kind of working on this project and, you know, we interview people all over the world that uh, I spend a day with them. Like this last guy I did was a paraplegic and he, he uh, painted with his paints with his mouth. So I spent a day with him and now I'm working on the kind of song and video for that. And it's like a documentary song, a songumentary. Wow. That's great. So that's keeping me kind of creative and keeping those juices flowing while while I wait for Steve and Mike for a, a hole to open up to tour, you know? <laughs> right. <laughs> well, listen, man, we, we all appreciate your music and uh, really happy that you guys put out another record and a fantastic record. Uh, Second Nature comes out uh, at the end of the month, so the 29th and 30th, I like think, Europe and, and America. Um, and so everybody should check that out. I'm sure they all will. And also, you know, Neil and Mike won for Transatlantic at the uh, Prague Awards Album of the Year, and I think... Uh, maybe they'll make it two in a row with this one next year, hopefully. So Yeah, let's hope so. Keep our fingers crossed. That'd be great. Listen, congrats on the baby, the album, your birthday, the whole thing. Sounds like a lot of good stuff going on. Oh, thanks so much, brother. Well thanks for you know, thanks for interviewing us and, and uh, pushing the cause. We appreciate it. Thanks, man. All right. Be good. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye. Thanks to Casey for the interview. We're gonna play the first single off of Second Nature, a track called Mask Machine. For more information and upcoming interviews, please check theprogreport.com. Thanks.